Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about cell transport. We already went over a concept map and this video on cell transport, um, but here I'm going to go over a few, just a few more things to help you review for tomorrow's test. So first off, in order to talk about uh, transport, you have to understand that a solution is made out of a solute and a solvent. And the solute doesn't actually disappear in the solution. So as you can see in this picture, when you add the solute to the solvent, the overall weight of the solution is, is the weight of both, even if you can't see the solvent and the sol uh, solute separately. Um, you should also know that the solute and the solvent can be separated. Okay? So our first word that you need to know is called diffusion. Diffusion is a process that occurs when particles move from high area of, of co high concentration to low concentration. So if you look at this right here to the left, see if the particles are moving, they started off at a high concentration area and then they move to an area of lower concentration. Um, see, high concentration to low concentration. So that is um, something called diffusion. Anytime you're looking at diffusion, you want to think about one type of particle at a time. You can't think about salt and water at the same time, right? You, when you're looking at the movement of salt, you're only thinking about the concentration of salt. When you're looking at the movement of water, you're only looking at the concentration of water, which are two different things. So make sure you're very clear about that. Um, if you look right here, uh, there are two more pictures showing you. If you put uh, a chunk of sugar or um, food coloring in water, you can see that it moves from area of high concentration of the sugar to low concentration of the sugar, right? But as water is moving, water will move from high concentration of water to low concentration of water, which are, the, for, for the sugar movement and the water movement, they're, they're the opposite. Um, as you can see in this picture, uh, the temperature has an effect on diffusion, right? If you were to dissolve sugar in water, um, the hot water will help the sugar dissolve a lot faster. So this is food coloring in water. Diffusion, um, the goal of diffusion is to reach equilibrium. So as you can see, we have high concentration of this particle right here. We have our phospholipid bilayer right here, and the molecules are able to move through the, uh, the cell membrane. And in the end, you reach something called equilibrium. And at equilibrium, that doesn't mean the particles stop moving, right? Particles are always moving, uh, just like people, unless you're sleeping. The particles are always moving. Um, so at equilibrium, these particles can still move back this way. These particles could still bump into each other and move back this way. However, the concentration of the particle on this side of the membrane and on this side of the membrane will stay the same. So we call that there's no net movement and there's no change in concentration of the substance. Okay? So it's important to remember that at equilibrium, the particles are still moving, but there's no net movement. There's no more movement this way or more movement this way. Movement of the particles in both ways are the same, which causes the concentration of both sides of the membrane to be the same as well. Um, there are two types of uh, diffusion. One is called simple diffusion. Um, as you can see right here, the particles can just move through the cell membrane on its own. There's also called, uh, something called facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion requires a protein. It could either be a protein channel or it could be a protein carrier. As you can see on this uh, left picture, we have a channel. So we have this protein, but there's, there's a tunnel in the middle to allow these particles to move from area of high concentration of that particle to area of low concentration of that particle. Here we have something called a carrier protein. So a carrier protein is like a door that opens both ways. So a carrier protein can open this way and allow the particle to be accepted. So let's take this as a particle. We put it in our carrier protein, right? It's coming in, and then the carrier protein can change its shape. I don't know if you saw the pen dropping, but that's our carrier protein opening one way, accepting the particle, and opening the other way to allow the particle to go through the membrane, as you can see right here. Um, so facilitated diffusion, as we talk about in class, uh, is for ions and polar molecules 
and maybe slightly larger molecules to move through the cell membrane because it's hard for those molecules to move through the cell membrane directly. And you have to remember that the cell membrane has areas that are hydrophobic and areas that are hydrophilic. So these heads, because they're facing the inside and the outside of the membrane, these heads of the phospholipid, those are polar and they're hydrophilic. And the tails are nonpolar and they're hydrophobic. Facilitated diffusion, just like the simple diffusion, it goes from area of high concentration of that particle to area of low concentration of that particle. If you look at this picture right here, uh, if we want to know where um, these particles are moving, you should be able to know that. So um, let's make it bigger. So if you look at this picture right here, you can see the particles moving through the cell membrane. Yeah, so what, what kind of diffusion this is? The simple diffusion, right? Because it's just move, the particles are just moving through the cell membrane directly. These particles, you can think of them as CO2, for example, that's a nonpolar small molecule going from area of high concentration of CO2 to area of low concentration of CO2 as well. All right, the next one is called osmosis. Osmosis is actually kind of a type of diffusion or a type of passive transport as well because osmosis allows the diffusion of water through a selectively permeable membrane and it goes from area of high concentration of water to area of low concentration of water. As you can see in this picture right here, um, these particles is it's not working. These particles are moving right through this uh, this channel and then uh, these are these are supposed to be water molecules. So um, if we go back to here, osmosis is a process that occurs when water moves from area of low solute to area of high solute. So low solute also means high water concentration. High solute also means area of low water concentration. So just like regular diffusion where we move from high area, high concentration of that one molecule, in this case it's water, um, that's how the water moves, okay? So if you look at this picture right here, let's, let's get rid of this for a second. Um, if you look at this picture right here, on the left side, we have high concentration of salt, but low concentration of water. On the right side, we have high concentration of water, but low concentration of salt or sugar. So it's important for you on the test, you want to draw this picture, okay? You want to draw this picture so that you can show yourself how water can move. Water can move from area of high concentration of water, which is on the right side, to area of low concentration of water, which is the left side. So water will move from the right side to the left side, which causes, since we have a selectively permeable membrane that doesn't allow sugar to go through, um, you actually see this difference in height of the solution on both sides of the membrane. So the key for osmosis, water move from uh, move to area of low water or area of high solute, right? So if you think about water, it has to move to area that doesn't have as much water or it's the same thing as having more solute in that same area. Please take a look at this Venn diagram on your own and then fill it out on your notes. Osmosis is only for water and water has to go through a selectively permeable membrane or semi-permeable membrane. Um, a diffusion can talk about both the solvent or the solute. So you, you could talk about water, you could talk about salt, you could talk about sugar, and there, it doesn't have to involve a selectively permeable membrane or semi-permeable membrane. What are they uh, both have in common? They both need net movement of molecule along concentration gradient. So along concentration gradient, or down the concentration, down the concentration gradient, means going from high concentration to low concentration. And this, the result is it allows solution to reach equilibrium. In this picture right here, um, in, on this slide, we're looking at passive transport. So osmosis, simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, those are all examples of passive transport. Passive transport means it doesn't require energy. If you remember this 
um, picture that we look at during class. See, passive transport, um, make it a little bit smaller. Passive transport, high to low, no energy, right? So this, um, this diagram right here is your focus for tomorrow's test. So let's get back here. Um, there's no energy input. The purpose is to maintain homeostasis, the constant internal condition of the cells. Molecules move from high to low, as we said, and there are three different examples are simple diffusion, I'm ask simple right here, simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. Um, so now let's practice. I want you to pause the video and answer this question. Did you pause? All right, so this picture, it, um, it shows you, is asking you which direction would water move? So we're not talking about salt. Salt cannot go through the semi-permeable membrane, but where can water move? We have higher water concentration on the left side and lower water concentration on the right side, which means water will move from left to right. Same thing right, same thing right here. If these molecules are water, it has to move from here through the membrane to here, okay? So now let's talk about um, isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic. The first one is called isotonic. Iso means equal or same. And isotonic means there's an equal amount of water and solid. Mm, I don't like the word amount. Let's change it to concentration. And there's an equal concentration of water and solute inside and outside of the membrane. So let's say we're putting a cell into a solution. If you put the cell into an isotonic solution, as you can see right here, if this is the cell right here, imagine a cell right here, and then this is the solution that the cell is in, then the isotonic solution will still allow molecules to move in and out of the cell, right? It will still allow water to move in and out of the cell because molecules can. Since right now we're talking about osmosis, in case you didn't know. We're talking about osmosis. So water can both move in both ways. Water will not stop moving because water can transport through the cell membrane. However, the concentration of water and concentration of the solute inside and outside of the cell will stay the same. And the result is, um, the result is the cell will remain the same size since there's, since there's there's an equal amount of water coming in and coming out of the cell. The next word is called hypertonic. Hyper means higher, higher amount, and you need to remember for yourself, higher amount of what? It's always, we're always talking about higher amount, hypertonic, isotonic, hypotonic. We're talking about solute. And if you were to say hypertonic solution, you can translate that, and you should translate that into a sentence that makes more sense. And the sentence that makes more sense is, there's a higher concentration of solute in the solution. That's what a hypertonic solution means. So let's say the side A and side B, right? When you're saying hypertonic, it's just like saying this, uh, this person is tall, but you only know one person is tall if you're comparing the taller person with a shorter person. So you have to compare an area with another area in order to say one area is hypertonic or one area is hypotonic, okay? So the B side right here is hypertonic and A side is hypotonic because it has less solute. So you can say uh, t side B is hypertonic to side A, but you can also say side A is hypotonic to side B. And how do you think water is gonna move? Water movement, which side do we have more water? All right, water is going to move from left to right, right? Because we have more water here and less water here. So if you look at this picture right here, if we put a cell in a hypertonic solution, as you can see right here, make sure that you draw the picture, draw the dots, and show yourself um, the concentration of the cell and the solution. So in this case right here, we have higher concentration of solute outside of the cell in the solution and lower concentration of solute inside the cell. And where is water going to move? Water is going to move out of the cell. All right, and the result is that your cell would shrink 
if you put the cell in a hypertonic solution. And this is what happens with the slug. If you put the slug in a hypertonic solution, or if you put salt on the slug, the water comes out. The next one is hypotonic. Just like we said earlier, B side is hypertonic to A side. So A side is hypotonic to side B. Okay. Um, so hypotonic means, if we say hypotonic solution, that means lower concentration of solute in the solution. So in this case, we have side A hypotonic to side B, and the result is water will move from which side to which side? It's still from side A to side B because there's less concentration of water on side B. And if you're just talking about regular diffusion or osmosis, it moves to area with less of that substance. In this case, we have less water right here. All right. What happens if we put a cell in a hypotonic solution? As you can see in this picture, and you should draw this picture for yourself, if the cell is, uh, if the solution is hypotonic to the cell, that means you would have more dots, more solute in the, uh, in the cell, and you'll have less dot in the solution, and the result is there's more water on the outside, less water on the inside, so water will fr move from the outside into the cell, and the result is the cells would expand. And this is why you can't give a person an IV with pure water, because in that case, um, all of that water is going to go in the cell, because the cell has all those organelles, it's quite concentrated, and then your cell is going to expand and explode, and that would not be fun. Um, so right here, a summary, okay? Water moves from where to where? From low solute concentration to high solute concentration because that's the opposite of what we're looking at, which is water. Water moves from high water concentration to low water concentration because that's, water is the substance that we're looking at, right? So it's, it's always high to low. So far, we've only talked about high to low. And it moves from area that's hypotonic. Hypotonic is the same thing as having low solute which is the same thing as having high water concentration to hypertonic. Um, why do we need osmosis and diffusion? To maintain homeostasis for our body so we can stay alive. Uh, the next one is called active transport. Remember, passive transport goes from high to low, and it does not require energy, just like a stone rolling down a hill. However, active transport is going from area of low concentration to area of high concentration. It's like moving a stone up the hill. It's like you walking up the stairs and coming to class in the Kavanaugh, right? It requires a lot of energy. So active transport moves material against a concentration gradient, which means you go from area of low concentration to area of high concentration. And this requires a lot of energy. Um, and how does this actually work? Uh, it works for um, well, you can, you can do this for regular molecules, um, but you can also do bulk transport, which also requires energy. And we'll talk about that in a second. So molecular transport. Um, molecular transport, we can have small molecules, right? And you have to have a membrane protein as well. So active transport always requires a membrane protein. So as you can see in this picture right here, we have this membrane protein. And ATP is the energy that's required to move these molecules from area of low concentration to area of high concentration. If we're going against the concentration gradient, there are a few things that happens. First, there has to be a membrane protein. Second, it requires energy. Third, low to high. Last one is called bulk transport. Bulk transport is taking in large chunks of food. So let's say you're taking in um, if, if it's a cell that's taking a, a larger chunk of food, then the food is too large to go through the cell membrane directly. So we do something called endocytosis or exocytosis. So this picture right here shows you exocytosis. You have a vesicle that has these molecules, these large molecules, let's say large proteins. These molecules um, are in the vesicle, and the vesicle will start fusing with the cell membrane. And then after it completely fuses, as you can see right here, the molecules will go out of the cell. 
uh, this is exocytosis. Endocytosis is pretty much the opposite. We have the, these molecules. Wait, that is not a right picture. Um, here is endocytosis. We have this food molecule. It comes to the cell membrane. The cell membrane will start caving in a little bit and start surrounding this food molecule. And then this food will form a vesicle inside the cell to allow the cell to take in this food. So this right here compares everything, right? Passive transport, we have diffusion and facilitated diffusion, the two types. We have a protein channel, we have a protein carrier. But all of these are going from high to low. To, uh, direct, this one is directly through the membrane. This one is through a protein channel or protein carrier. But it's all from high to low and does, does not require energy. Active transport is when you go from low to high. So as you can see, we have higher uh, concentration of these, these uh, squares. And then in order to move these two squares to the other side, we need energy. It goes from low to high, and we also need a protein to, to help. And then the bulk transport is endocytosis and exocytosis. I hope you find this video helpful.